So Manoj, you are there in office or you are in uh, your home? I, I was in office. I just reached here about 10, 15 minutes before. Okay, I am also in office. Oh, you are in office now? Yes, sir. Background. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. So you, you are driving, right? I'll drive you. No, I uh, like uh, I since morning I am here. No, uh, how will you go back here? No, I have my time. Uh, oh, I have time. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's very difficult for me to give a presentation, some lecture from my home. My daughter is there. <laughs> <laughs> she looks at all sort of things. <laughs> okay. Sir, it's seven o'clock. So, shall we start the meeting? Now, wait for one more minute. So, we'll wait. Uh, some more people can join, and then we can wait okay, for sir. one minute. I have sent a um, message to you. Did you get that, Anna? Uh, no, sir. Wait. Let me check it. A chat message. You can. Yeah. <laughs>
Hanna? Yeah, I think we can start that. Okay. The energy of the mind is the essence of life. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I, Hanna Anza, take it as my privilege to welcome you all to this distinguished lecture powered by IEEE EMBS Kerala chapter. Today, we are extremely delighted to have with us Dr. Palash Kumar Basu, Associate Professor, Department of Avionics, Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology, Trivandrum, sharing his aspects on design and development of low power, low cost, high performance gas sensor array for exhaled breath analyzer, the present and future. Before we begin, participants are kindly requested to mute their microphone. Also, I would like to bring your attention to the feedback form provided during the session, and you can mark up your queries regarding the session in the chat box, which I'll read out at the end of the session. Once again, I welcome you all to this distinguished lecture conducted by IEEE EMBS Kerala chapter. Now, moving on to the session formally, I invite Dr. Manoj Beers, Chairperson, IEEE EMBS Kerala chapter, for the wel to welcome the virtual gathering. Thank you, Hannah. Uh, a very good uh, afternoon uh, or good evening to one and all. So, um, this is uh, one of the distinguished lecture events of IEEE EMBS Kerala chapter. As you may have already known that uh, IEEE EMBS is the largest professional uh, organization for biomedical engineers, uh, uh, telemedicine professionals, uh, and uh, you know, uh, uh, those who conduct uh, you know, the research on the boundary or integration of medicine and civil as engineering. So uh, we have been organizing several such uh, uh, distinguished events and several student training programs and various other activities for the development of our membership. So uh, today we have uh, 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 Dr. Palash Kumar Basu who has been doing very active research on uh, bio Logical sensors and various kinds of sensors using nanotechnology and nanoscience. So, I would like to extend my uh, 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 personal welcome as well as on behalf of uh, IEEE EABS Kerala chapter, a warm welcome to Dr. Palash Kumar Basu. So, welcome, Dr. Palash. Uh, then, I would like to uh, 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 welcome. Um, uh, Dr. Vivian Krishnamurthy, who is a registrar IAST, uh, who was former uh, uh, scientific secretary of ISRO, has served the uh, National Remote Sensing Center uh, of uh, uh, Hyderabad, India, and many other roles in his uh, illustrious career in uh, you know, ISRO for spanning the last uh, you know, 30, 40 years. So uh, thank you, sir, for joining, and we welcome you heartily for uh, uh, participating in this uh, event. Uh, so I would like to welcome all the office bearers of uh, IEEE MBS Kerala chapter uh, for having here, those who are watching this event live through YouTube uh, uh, from across the world. Uh, uh, we welcome you and many other distinguished people here whom I could not uh, call out individually. Uh, um, apologies for that, uh, and I welcome each and every one. Thank you, Hannah. You can go ahead with the rest of the process. Okay. Uh, so I, uh, is, uh, no, I, I also invite Manu B.S. Uh, for the introduction of the speaker. Uh, thank you uh, once again for giving me this opportunity to introduce Dr. Palash Kumar Basu. So Dr. Palash Kumar Basu uh, is currently working as an associate professor at the Department of Avionics, Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology, IAST. Before joining at IAST, he has worked as a centenary postdoc fellow uh, during 2010 and 2013 in Center for Nanoscience and Engineering, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. He made uh, significant contributions uh, in the field of novel nanostructure-based gas sensors for various applications. At present, uh, he is focusing mainly on the reliability and stability of issues of gas sensors in uh, harsh conditions. He is also developing indigenous gas sensors for environmental control and life support systems for the upcoming prestigious Gaganyan mission of uh, uh, our nation. He has uh, more than 30 publications 
five patents and several conference papers pertaining to research on nanostructures and nanosensors in the area. He has also been adjunct as the highly funded faculty in the Department of Avionics Department, Avionics uh, in IAST. And uh, he was also uh, adjunct as one of the uh, outstanding mentors for uh, PG uh, uh, research and teaching in IAST too. So uh, he has developed several uh, interesting you know, uh, uh, devices, test beds, and uh, you know, facilities in uh, his laboratory in IAST. One of that is actually unique to uh, 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 India as well as uh, the state of Kerala. It's about the calibration facility for uh, various kind of gas sensors. He has also been a consultant to various centers of ISRO, including VSSC, um, uh, 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 LPSC, and IPRC. So, uh, in fact, he is one of the very promising scientists uh, in this area in our country. So, once again, uh, 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 thank you for this opportunity to uh, introduce uh, uh, Dr. Parash Payadatta. Um, over to you, Hannah. Uh, thank you, sir. So, the wait is on. Now, let's all synchronize our attention towards the esteemed speaker, Dr. Palash Kumar Basu. Sir, the platform is all yours. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. And thank you, uh, Professor Manoj, for such a nice introduction and really motivating me. Uh, thank you, sir. And thank you, uh, Dr. Baiju, the all researchers, actually. I mean, I, it's very difficult to name each and every, but before this session, I was, we are just having some discussion and it opens up a lot of other, uh, like, uh, future collaboration uh, initiatives. So, thanks, thanks for such a great opportunity to present our research activity in this platform. Okay. And I especially thanks uh, Professor Vaivy and Krishnamurti because, uh, as Professor Manoj already discussed, told about Manoj, uh, about Krishnamurti said, what is important that he is the backbone of this development, especially the gas sensor and biosensor, whatever we are developing at IST, uh, because of him, it has come to this level. So I am really grateful for, to him, actually. Thank you, sir. Thank you for participating in this lecture. Sir. So uh, let me share, sir. Yeah, please share. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I think it is, uh, I think the screen is shared, sir. Uh, every yes, can it is shared. You can go to full screen mode. Yes, sir. I'll go to that. Mode. Yeah. So nice. now it is in presentation mode. So everything is. Uh, uh, yes. All yes, yes, yes. So uh, before uh, starting my presentation, I'd like to tell that, uh, uh, yeah, so it is. The presentation is about design and development of low power, low cost, high performance gas sensor array for Excel based analyzer present at future. Thing is that it's not, uh, I mean to say like, it's not a pure technical discussion, right? Uh, so technical presentation, I, I would like to say like, it is an overview of what kind of activities are going on in other uh, uh, different sectors regarding developing of such kind of uh, analyzer and what are the problems we need to address to develop or to qualify those sensors. And lastly, that what are the problems that IST are actually facing to qualify about the devices. So it's not about the publication or nothing. Publication is a totally different issue. And here what uh, is actually to realize a prototype, number one, to qualify this prototype. And what are the issues that we need to address uh, to uh, put it forward, okay? So the whole, uh, the discussion you can, uh, it is, it is divide, divided in six section. One is the motivation. So thing is that there are already gold standards are available, like blood test or any biofluid test. So why are we are looking for an Excel based analyzer? So that is that's actually motivation. Then I'll definitely give a brief introduction. What is the significance of Excel based analysis? After that, what are the problems associated for PBA? And not only the Excel based analysis, the research associated on these things, because it's not that uh, one fine day you decide and start working. No, it won't happen, right? So you need to have the proper facility to uh, to carry forward this research and proper motivation should come forward. Okay. Now, uh, IST are working, uh, uh, that one of the main component to develop the meta uh, uh, to develop excel based analysis at the sensors right 
and there are a lot of uh, research activity are going on different type of sensor IST also are doing a lot of research to develop such kind of sensor one of the important component of pixel breath analyzer sensor that's what i'm saying so one of the sensor that i'm uh, we are uh, i'm going to discuss about the metal oxide based gas sensor array IST is also working for the optical gas sensor but which i am not going to discuss i'll focus only the metal oxide based gas sensor that's most popular as a form of point of care diagnosis and there are two cases uh, we are going to discuss one case one uh, that is actually pediatric patient and if the gastrointestinal disease uh, for pediatric patient mainly newborn or premature baby and another one is actually nothing but cardiovascular disease okay there are another activity called the lung cancer uh, but uh, it's actually very uh, nascent stage and still we have we are actually working on few of my students are working i'll share something on that uh, lung cancer and the problems of having lung cancer uh, excel breath analyzer what we are facing to initiate the work so before i start so it's actually motivation so why we are going uh, why, why we are looking for another type of uh, uh, analyzer because as i told you there are already gold standards are available right so let's uh, consider the cancer. Right? We don't need to discuss about the cancer. We know what is cancer, right? Now there are 50 or 60 percent of area that we can have a tissue biopsy. Okay, uh, and tissue biopsy is kind of uh, the confirmation test, right? To identify or diagnose the cancer. Normally that is how it is recognized, and it's a gold standard test actually. As I told you, there is a 50 or 55 percent of area we can have a tissue biopsy. Right. A rest of things we cannot have a tissue biopsy. There are some portion of cancer it can develop, it may develop where we cannot take the samples. Okay. Now, if that 55 percent of tissue biopsy, uh, we can have a tissue biopsy region, and most of the cases we need to have a detailed surgical procedure uh, to collect the tissues. The first you can see, uh, okay, so. First, you can see it is actually one of the uh, this, uh, paper, the scientific report. So it is nothing but they are collecting samples from the brain, right? And uh, it is actually Raman spectrometer that is they are calling it in situ tissue biopsy, right? They put a catheter inside the brain, and uh, instead of collecting the tissue, the it goes the Raman spectrometer uh, it goes there and try, and try to measure the different parameters, okay? And they are, they are trying to compare with the standard uh, data points, okay? The problems you can you can definitely understand that we have to uh, it's a detailed surgical procedure and we have to open some of the portion you need to drain it and you have to collect the uh, collect the samples. Definitely, it's not a comfortable situation no, for the patients. Right. Another thing is that uh, suppose uh, the suppose it cancer is detected in brain cancer it is detected right now. Definitely, we are uh, we need to have some sort of medicine, some sort of radiation or chemotherapy, a lot of things actually. Now, if we want to see the prognosis, the, what is the effect of the drugs, what are the effects of the radiation, again, uh, tissue biopsy is not preferable. You can understand this is actually really a complicated process, right? So, to understand the effect of the drug, we need to have a, another technique, which is actually, if it is a non-invasive, that is actually welcome, right? We can avoid the panic stage of the uh, uh, patient. We can give more comfortable uh, atmosphere if it is a non-invasive technique. Okay. So, bottom, you can see it is actually video. Let's not play the video. It is actually detailed, pro uh, detailed process that uh, when uh, they have shown how to take the uh, samples from the uh, uh, brain. It's very complicated uh, process. So, uh, uh, so what I'm trying to tell. So, there are situations, there are process, there are uh, portion in our brain where uh, we can have tissue biopsy. Okay, we can collect the tissue biopsy. Most of the portion in our brain, we cannot have a tissue biopsy. We cannot put any catheter in our brain, in the deep into the brain. We can have a biopsy only the skull portion, upper portion, right? So that's what. So only 50% is such as other, our stomach and other uh, portion, CNS, central nervous system, we cannot have a tissue biopsy in all the zones, right? Only selected zone, we can have a tissue biopsy. So uh, the other picture you can see it is a lung cancer, right? So they are taking the samples from the lungs. So from the bottom, the backside, they are putting some uh, tube and uh, they collect the uh, tissue from the lungs. So you see the pain, you see the panic stage, and you see 
the discomfort of the patient, right? So the bottom one is actually breast cancer tissue. So breast cancer, I think it is a little bit, we uh, still are collecting a tissue, but you can do it with a local anesthetic. And this other one is actually bone marrow, uh, like a bone collection. And if it is a central nervous system, bone collection is also very, very complicated, right? So all actually tending, demanding something which is actually non-invasive way, right? These are actually gold standard, no doubt about their efficiency, but we should also look as a scientist, we should look at alternate way, okay, to give more comfort to the patients, right? So that's the one uh, motivation. So we should find out a more comfortable way to give more com uh, to give more uh, comfort to the patients, right? Uh, so this is actually cardiovascular disease. You know that mortality rate of cardiovascular cancer. I don't need to discuss, right? People know about it, right? The thing is that uh, it's not that cardiovascular uh, 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 diseases are happening either suddenly, right? Stroke is or heart failure is happening suddenly. No, it's not like that, right? It is accumulating uh, for long. Uh, maybe two weeks, three weeks or four weeks back, okay? Maybe symptoms are not there, but thing is that our biological activity is somehow changing, right? And if you can predict this biological activity, then we can stop uh, this uh, mortality. We can step, stop, uh, uh, we can uh, arrest the cardiovascular disease, right? Now, how to do it, right? So there's a one great way to do it that is definitely non-invasive way, right? Morning, each and every morning you excel out some gases, okay? And you analyze those gases, right? And if some uh, uh, abnormalities are there, so then you immediately go to the doctor and say that, see, in my Excel breath, I found some abnormalities are there, some biomarkers concentration are changing. I'll show, I'll tell you what are the biomarkers. Uh, my biomarkers are changing. Now it's time to go for detailed testing. Now you have to do it. So we can stop. We can actually save some lives if we can do such a system. Now you see the it's not about the lab equipment I'm talking about. I'm talking about a handheld equipment which you can carry to our, uh, uh, which can be placed bedside each and every day. We can do some non-invasive test, right? So that type of equipment we are talking about, right? Now, next slide, it's also part of the motivation because I have faced these things when we are discussing with the uh, hospital. The pre-born, uh, premature baby or uh, like a newborn baby, they have suffering a lot of disease, may suffer a lot of disease. Now, how to detect this? Definitely, you need to collect some blood because blood, again, is the gold standard, right? But, you know, newborn or premature baby, they don't have a, that much blood pressure, pressure to uh, that if you puncture something to collect, right? So, collecting blood from the newborn baby or pediatric patient is actually really challenging, right? Uh, those who have sub, uh, saw that you you might have known it's a really only skilled technician can do it right and not only that to see the prognosis like suppose some medit suppose a child is suffering from pneumonia right and if you want to see the prognosis of medicine it's not a good idea to do multiple blood tests though it is a gold standard so if we have a non-invasive way to diagnose the unprognosis of such kind of disease that would be great thing and finally is the space institute and we are also having some collaboration. We have initiated some collaboration, Danish Aerospace Company, to establish, uh, to develop a cardiovascular disease, uh, Excel breath analyzer for cardiovascular disease. You see, the collecting blood from the astronauts in the microgravity conditions are challenging, right? And the NASA, European Space Agency, Cosmogons, already is actually thinking about the breath analyzer because breath is actually normal. So it's the body output. So if we can have so if you collect the breath and if you try to analyze, so that can uh, uh, that can be used uh, 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 to predict the astronaut health. So there's a lot of activities are going on, though the problem is that none of these activities are actually standardized. The introduction of the why Excel breath analyzer. So you must have understood, like uh, it is a non uh, it is a non invasive technique, right? We are simply collecting the uh, uh, breath and we are trying to understand. Uh, the, we are trying to measure the concentration of the gases. Why breath? Actually, based on the biophysical activity, based on the metabolism in our body, uh, so uh, we are actually excelling, excelling out different concentration of gases. How many gases? There are 3,000 gases till now identified. There are 7,000 gases or VOC are not identified. So please note down the number, 3,000 approximately has already been identified 
most of the cases, and there are 7,000. The people are saying that they are actually unknown species. They still uh, yet to be identified, right? So, based on biophysical activity, based on our metabolism, based on the disease condition, body condition, the concentration of the VOC, volatile organic component of gases, are changing. And if you and these gases can work as a biomarker, and if you can uh, do and if you can predict, if you can measure the concentration of the gases, we can use it as a early detection of particular disease. It can be cardiovascular disease, it can be any cancer, it can be pneumonia, anything, anything, okay? So that is actually so a uh, very, very important and that is why people are investing so much time to develop Excel breath analyzer, right? And, uh, is, but the major problem is that it has actually four or five uh, portion of this development none of these actually are matured. I'll tell you, I'll explain it, okay? But still it is having huge potential, okay? Now, uh, so what are the major component of Excel breath analyzer? What are the things that we need to perform, okay? First thing is uh, the standard way, the, uh, the traditional way, state of art things actually, you have to collect the breath. Right. This is, uh, I'm not uh, advertise, advising any of the company's things, so uh, kindly excuse me, but still I put, take some pictures of standard uh, breath collection bottle, okay. So bottle, uh, so we actually excel, we actually put our breath inside this bottle, okay, simple excel uh, out the bottle, or you can collect the Tedler bag, okay, that is also people are using. Now, the, whether it is a, this box and the material of the tetral box bag or this material of this box depends on the what kind of gases that you want to investigate. Why, why it is so important? Suppose I am trying to investigate the isoprene, one of the hydrocarbons, right? It is actually one ppm or it's less than one ppm. If your tetral bag or if your uh, that container itself degassed the isoprene or related hydrocarbons, so it creates lot of, uh, a lot of contamination. So, that you should have, we should have a bag, we should have a box which is actually less contaminated. We, the degassing factor is very, very close. You cannot make it zero, but it's very, very, uh, uh, very close to zero. Okay. Another thing is that from how to excel out, right? So excel out, you have to have alveoli portion. Al what is alveoli portion? That is the last portion of the respiratory system where carbon dioxide and oxygen exchange are happening. Those who have, because I am an asthma patient, I have uh, faced such kind of things several times. The, those who have an experience of lung function test or such kind of HENO test at any hospital, they say it, they first tell that you blow fast. You several times blow so that you actually em you create some emptiness on your lungs. So that means the pressure are low. And in that case, there is a diffusion of gases from this uh, uh, alveolar section. So that alveolar gas will come to a lungs, then when, and after that, when you blow, then this, all the gases will come out, right? It's not that you simply come and blow and you collect and telling that I have collected my breath sample, it's not like. You have to first create some emptiness in your lung cancer, uh, sorry, uh, lungs, and then the alveolar gas will come, okay? Which is a mixture of all the bio biomarkers, okay? And that needs to be collected. Right. So this is very, very important, uh, this section, to collect the proper uh, uh, breath samples. Okay? It's not a random sample. And you need to collect a proper breath or from proper zones. Okay? So this is the one of the things that we need to remember. So collection and storage of bag is very, very important. Next thing is that uh, if the concentration of gases in that case are very, very low, maybe PPT, parts per trillion, or PPB, parts per billion uh, uh, range, right? We need to pre-concentrate those gases, right? And there are a lot of, lot of method to pre-concentrate uh, uh, parts are there. So before uh, this pre-concentration is required, and after pre-concentrating, we need to put into the DCMS system. Gas chromatography must be to the system. Kindly note that I'm talking about the standard process, right? How the breath analysis are happening. Now you see the whole process, if you see the whole process is actually need it's actually okay uh, okay so, so so the whole process you need a skilled technician you need a proper laboratory pathological laboratory with ac condition proper hvac system all these things right and the equipments are costly the 60 or 70 lakhs is the gcms system so which we are also planning to buy recently 
so it needs technician it needs a huge uh, uh, investment right it's, 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 it's really uh, uh, things people are doing okay now what now what are the data we are getting so these data are need to be analyzed now the question is what kind of analysis it is like that i'll tell you that what kind of analysis in a minute but thing is that it's very very important to have a proper algorithm or proper signal processing without signal processing breath analysis is, 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 is no, no meaning actually so each and every component has their own importance so so and signal processing is very very important in this case so this is the traditional way that people are doing uh, uh, collecting sample and doing some analysis now the questions how since this this method, as I told you, is not a point of care or lab uh, um, point of care diagnosis. No, you cannot have these things in your uh, very close to your bed bedside. So what people are thinking? People are thinking like, can we have a, such a system like we simply breathe um, uh, Excel out directly on the sensors? In this cross process, we can avoid two things. One is actually collection of the uh, uh, collection of the breath to a particular bag number one and storage of the bag two things you can have because sensor is smart enough uh, uh, when you breathe out on the sensor directly it can detect the concentration that is actually online mode right so that is how people are actually challenging uh, 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 proposing and people there are two three methods that people actually propose one of the best method a popular method that is metal oxide based gas sensor array right why metal oxide based gas sensor array as it is a low cost i mean cost is how hardly 500 rupees so as gcms is actually few crore i mean very close to 60 70 lakhs another thing is that metal oxide based gas sensor if you have you can make it a miniature device like it's just like a, a traffic guard uh, uh, how they are testing alcohol little bit bigger than that you can make it right but the prop thing is that each sensor are not selected to a particular gas, right? It is select so each sensor, uh, one sensor can be selective or to or can have a sensitivity of different different gases. Though the sensitivity nature, response time, recovery time, rise time, uh, fall time are totally different, but it is having such kind of uh, nature, right? And that is why we need a pattern recognition algorithm. Mainly people are following machine learning, deep learning, all these things. So these are the data point of those those things, right? So this. That suppose you have a six sensors, so six sensors are behaving different way of particular combinations of gases. We have to understand, we have to observe those change of the gases, sensor output, and we need to understand the concentration of the gases, right? That is how the signal processes are coming forward. So as I told you, this is no need of collection. This method, metal oxide bed gas sensor array, storage, pre-concentration of gases, no need of technician and laboratory. It can be considered a POC. And that is one of the reasons people are actually jumping on it, right? Because it costs hardly 500, uh, uh, less than 5,000 rupees, you can make everything, okay? And sensor cost itself 500 rupees. Now here, I don't, you don't need to uh, read all the gases because take the bottom line. I have taken this paper for scientific reports. So I'm, I'm going to discuss about the issues. Uh, this paper is for scientific reports and they have uh, mostly identified around 30, 31 VOC volatile organic compounds for the lung cancer. Like, so wh why, why it is so like, it's not why not one or two, no. For a particular cancer, one or two gases or one or two VOCs are not sufficient, right? So they have identified 31 gases needs to be needs to be calibrated, needs to be identified, and then only you can confirm that, okay, the patient might have a lung cancer, even it's not a gold standard, but might have a cancer. So 31, 34. Okay, and it's not actually, and now if you go to the next paper, you see, this is actually Nanoletter Nature paper, 2009 articles. There also, they have listed around 34 or 35 uh, uh, lung cancer VOCs, they have they have reached 42 number of, of gases they have in the, they have done survey of 100 number of patients so they have listed 42 number of gases out of that i think 33 they have identified the gases and rest of things they could not identify there is a signature in the gcms system but they could not identify those gases what is the bottom line we are taking uh, we are taking that 
there is a no single gases are there there is a no not even two three four five thirty one thirty gases we need to detect before we confirm that patient is having lung cancer and the funny part is that these both are actually very good journal the none of this uh, VOCs, not all VOCs are common. There is only 60% similarities are there. So first paper, they are claiming that we have a, we, we have, when we surveyed on the patient, we have found out 31 uh, VOCs, lung cancer patient, 31 pieces. Uh, these are the uh, VOCs. Next paper, they are saying, okay, okay, we have also surveyed 100 number of patients and we have found these are the VOCs and none of, and only 60% similarities there. You see the problem because it tells you that these biomarkers are still not standardized. Nobody can tell you that, okay, if you have a 30 number of VOC, then it is confirmed that you are having or you may have, we may have a lung cancer. No, still some research are going on because this VOC are still not been confirmed. We have not generated any breath libraries till today. Okay, that is the one major problem and which actually needs to be addressed. So there are a lot of scientists are addressing those things. Okay. Now the question comes over why so variations over there? <clears throat> the variations are there. Things is that suppose there is a no because if you see this bio uh, the nature nanotechnology paper, they have compared with a healthy patient. But when I discuss with the AIMS, some teams in AIMS, mainly uh, the cancer team in AIMS, all in the Institute of Medical uh, uh, Science. So they have said there is a no call, there is a no term called the healthy patients. Because healthy patient is kind of absurd uh, term because no one is there in the world who is fully healthy. Each and every body is having some sort of biological activity, some sort of problem. So healthy patients are not, uh, it's a virtual thing. Thing is that, I'm having a diabetic plus some bacterial infections, which may not be symptom, it's not giving any symptom, but I may have. In, so I'm con now I'm giving the blood, I mean, I'm giving the Excel. So you now you are actually telling that, okay, this VOC, suppose toluene, it is coming 50 ppm. But we never considered my background disease. So that background disease can alter the VOC, volatile organic compound, it's emitting due to the lung cancer because it's a lot of biological activities are going on inside the inside our body and a lot of people are doing that kind of research number one number two uh, most of the voc are also common for other cancers the voc for other cancers means like suppose you go for pancreatic cancer suppose you go for the other uh, 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 lung cancer most of the cases are common so distinguish a particular cancer is also really, really problem. Yeah. Another thing is that this is also depends on the how healthy I am. I mean to say healthy definition means say, suppose I'm an athletic, I'm doing a lot of regular exercise, I'm doing a lot of workout, the concentration range and the amount of gas uh, and the kind of VOCs are uh, emitting from my body. If I am having lung cancer, it's totally different if the body uh, uh, if the patient who doesn't do any type of uh, workout, right? So this is also a great factor. Third factor, what we have noticed that uh, it's actually a geographical factor. Suppose we are, at, suppose a person is in a hilly station, right? They are actually much more strong. I mean, like their regular activity are totally different in the common land, right? So their metabolism are totally different. So they also emit different, different concentrations of gases. So this range selections are also challenging. Number one, number two, the if so, mainland common land patients and the uh, and the heel patients. Okay, if they both have a lung cancer, the VOC that they are emitting is all are also different. Okay. So these are the really problematic. So what I'm message is that bottom line is that still the standardization are actually uh, needs to do uh, needs to be done. And people are working uh, on it, and there are a lot of activities are going on, but still we don't have any brief library, or we can really go for and search for that uh, biomarkers. So now I'll come to uh, one by one uh, process, and let's see what ISTs are doing. Okay. Now, if you see the collection of breath sample, 
So definitely, I can see that collection of base sample is there, and if we have a collection of storage of base sample, we can use a GCMS system. That is a standard technique, right? So, thing is, the sample should be collected and stored in the standard method. We need sample preparation. Definitely, we need a technician to prepare the sample and to collect the sample. When there are not only that, there are few gases are also available which cannot be detected by GCMS system. Okay. So these are also creating a lot of problems because we have faced this problem when you try to purchase the GCMS system for breath analyzer, we found when you give a list, all vendors are telling that, okay, we cannot do it, we cannot do that range, we cannot do, so these also are there. So even the GCMS system, which actually uh, main point, the standard point for this kind of analysis, that they have, they don't have that kind of uh, capability. So it is a really challenging over there, right? So, but still, as I told you, still people are doing a lot of research on this, okay? Now, this is the one of the part that people are doing research to standardize, uh, uh, to create a brief library as close as the ideal, okay? Now, another group of people are doing research instead of GCMS, they are using a uh, gas sensor array because we cannot stop our research. We need, it is a parallel activity. We should go parallel. So one people, one people, uh, one group of people should do standardization. Another group of people should develop a uh, sensor, right? That's very, very important. So if we or I want to have a point of care diagnosis system in front of my bedside, so we cannot have a GCMS system. So we need to have a miniature gas sensor. So one of the methods that people are actually always following that is metal oxide based gas sensors, right? There are optical gas sensor also IST are doing, but we are not going to discuss about that. The next part portion is actually signal processing and hardware development. As I told you, it's very, very important because you are having huge parameters. And already I discussed a lot of parameters, like is it function of geographical position, whether it is a function, function of uh, my background disease, um, it is a fu function of my whether my body is athletic or not, how, how good my body is, all these things are there. So you it's actually adding a lot of parameters to the pattern recognition technique. So signal processing and hardware are very, very complicated. Lot of, lot of investment, a lot of, lot of uh, research has to be done on these sites, right? Custom validation and mapping. As I told you, this still we don't have a brief library, but at least we can start validating. Whatever the standard uh, method uh, available, we can start va validation, right? For an example, I, I let me tell you that if I have a gut infection, stomach infection, I'm giving you my data. My data points, my hydrogen is normally 200 ppm. If I am normal, if I don't have any uh, stomach infection, and my methane range is around uh, 400 uh, ppm. If I am having some back, uh, uh, kind of bacteria infection, that hydrogen uh, level actually goes up around 400, 500 ppm, and my methane infection also goes up around 600 ppm, right? That I really measured, okay? So it's from my data point I'm telling you about, about that. So, but you see the hydrogen methane is a simple data point. So there for stomach infections, we have a more than 20 type of biomarkers, but we can start with selecting a very uh, two or three gases and slowly, slowly we can add one by one gases in our signal and system and we can validate each and every gas. That is one of the things that people are trying and people are doing and I feel it's a good strategy, okay? So validation and mapping, though it is still there is no breath, uh, breath uh, library, we cannot do validation properly, but we can do something, okay, in this case. And another thing is the IST are working on all areas. So, uh, uh, so IST are doing metal oxide based uh, gas sensor. IST are also uh, collaborating or uh, start finding some collaboration about the signal processing and hardware development. IST are also looking also the validation and mapping. So and to standardize the technique. So we are already discussing the Danish Aerospace Company uh, who already made few devices for International Space Station to measure the astronaut health condition. We are also uh, collaborating a lot of hospitals uh, to see uh, how far we can calibrate our sensors, okay? So uh, before I start uh, tell about, uh, it's not that all breath samples, uh, there is a no data point. This is a FDA approval data point, FDA approval gas phase. Okay, so if it is a cell about of carbon dioxide, so that is a pylori infection, that is FDA approved. So then NO is such asthma or airway inflammation, carbon monoxide, mainly carbon toxication and uh, like little bit of heart failure, hydrogen, lactose, malabsorption, and uh, you know, asthma and airway inflammation. So these are the only FDA approved gases which can be measured 
for a particular disease okay but it's not as i told you it's not a gold standard it is actually it is like a uh, site uh, auxiliary uh, uh, auxiliary uh, testing or the characterization so uh, we are i am going to discuss uh, i'm going to discuss about uh, uh, that what is the, uh, what IIST are doing about the gases as i told you there are a lot of activities are parallel going on but let me focus on the uh, the metal oxide bed gas filter in this uh, uh, in this uh, uh, discussion in this lecture right, right? so uh, before i start there is a call the chemi sensor lab, lab at IIST there are two friction gas sensor or bio sensor the gas sensor we are making of state of art facility uh, as the help of isro and DST, DBT, HSFC, IPRC, all are actually giving a lot of funds and often the IIST have put a lot of investment to make a state of art facility and where all type of gas calibration can be done over here, right? And uh, this facility is having four or five PhD students, two, three, and a lot of UG and PG students, so all actually working together, okay? So, uh, so I'm please uh, I'm inviting all of you, please come and visit the lab so we can have some discussion over there. So as I told you, we are already have some discussion with Danish Aerospace Company because they are the most experiment at the moment in the world to make it the breath analyzer for astronauts. So we are also initiated some sort of discussion. We are also initiated discussion with Indian Aerospace uh, in, uh, Institute, of Aero, uh, Institute of Aerospace Medicine and the Kerala Institute of Medical Science uh, to calibrate our sensors. So definitely you are welcome to have uh, more things. So these are the three zones that IST are working. The first one is actually uh, that uh, uh, gastrointestinal disease for pediatric patient, which I'm going to discuss, and the biomarker that we have suggested, and it's more or less standardized, that is hydrogen, 1 to 500 ppm, methane, 1 to 5,000 ppm, and carbon dioxide, 1 to 1,000 ppm, okay? So, as I told you, like, if I breathe, uh, like, it is range is 200 ppm, but if I'm having some infection it goes to 300 400 ppm of hydrogen same thing methane and all these things so it is kind of optimized at iist right second work we are doing cardiovascular biomarker for excel breath analysis where the biomarkers there are 10 20 biomarkers are there but we have identified in the cluster basis like methane carbon monoxide no isoprene trimethanolamine and dimethanolamine so we have identified only to develop the sensor for methane carbon monoxide and isoprene so maybe next year we will start trimethylamine and tri sorry instead of trimethylamine it should be dimethylamine okay sorry for the typo so this kind of uh, work activity we are doing we have also initiated lung cancer but uh, it is very nation state and let's it's so complex lung cancer let's not discuss on this part let's discuss about that uh, for pediatric patient and for uh, cardiovascular disease because the number of biomarkers are less okay so our proposal, uh, like uh, it is actually copyright, we have submitted, so I'm not showing exact design. So it is actually, we have Excel out, uh, like those people, uh, like I'm an asthma patient and I know there is a called the spacer, right? So it is simply like a spacer. Uh, so like we have a spacer type of things, we Excel out our gas over there and there is a non-return valve, okay? which actually allow gas to one direction and not uh, not the other direction. So we have a non-return valve over here and the, all the gas will come uh, this side, okay, uh, in this valve. And here, this uh, we placed our nanomaterial sensor, okay. And so the nanomaterial sensor, which is nothing but metal oxide based gas sensor, we have placed over there and we do standard uh, select and standard measurement, right, simply change of resistance. Uh, and we uh, we actually map with the data library. And that's what we are actually doing. As I told you, we are developing metal oxide based real gas sensor. Okay. So another question is come, why metal oxide based sensor? Those who are work on metal oxide based, they know a lot of things, but in brief, it is a low cost. Like we can develop the sensor within the 500 rupees. Okay. Less than 500 rupees. And uh, the idea is that we have a metal oxide like zinc oxide, titanium oxide, tin oxide, any oxide. And it changes resistance when it interacts with the gases. And we are measuring the change of resistance in presence and in absence of gases. Okay. That is what the metal oxide based sensor works. So it has a lot of things like large sensitivity, fast response time, recovery time, low power consumption, mechanical stability, uh, reliability, long life. No, I am not. Uh, uh, I'm not. I'm going to discuss about this thing. But there is a one problem of metal oxide based gas sensor. It is not selective. What do you mean not selective? Like each sensor 
suppose zinc oxide it is sense it is select it gives sensitivity to hydrogen it also gives sensitivity to methane so that's one of the great problem where pattern recognition come into uh, very important another thing is that it suffers for the long life like if you measure do measurement today you get some data point and if you do the measurement after one week you'll get another data point so it is actually degrade each and every sensor degrades with time so metal oxide also actually degrades sometimes so this is the major two problem that we need to identify now you understand the problem of signal processing these two parameters also need to be added whoever is designing their uh, uh, that uh, signal processing right uh, so they have to do proper pattern recognition taking con considering uh, the aging factor so uh, i'll go in very brief uh, about the fundamental mechanism because you can find a lot of papers on it but that's not the importance for this lecture i'm not going to detail the thing is that you have oxygen you have a metal oxide okay so suppose it is a zinc oxide and when this zinc oxide is there there is a lot of absorption adsorption ad adsorption of oxygen it takes electron out of that right and we measure the change of resistance so you see this is the so when there is a uh, adsorption of oxygen it creates lot of depletion region and depletion region more means it is more resistive right now when hydrogen comes why hydrogen i'll explain in minute uh, but when hydrogen comes so hydrogen reacts with this oxygen and whatever electron has been taken by oxygen it give back to the grain of zinc oxide and in that case the resistance actually decreases right the so resistance decrease means my depletion region is actually reduced okay i'm not going in too much detail because it's a multidisciplinary uh, audience are there but it is a very one thing you need to remember we are it changing its resistance in absence of presence of gases and we are we are actually simply measuring the change of resistance now this is one of the uh, uh, paper that we have identified what kind of grains we should have right the grain size should be uh, uh, the nanometer range why if you want to have a high resistive uh, 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 nanomaterial like if you want to adsorb most of the oxygen then it should be very very small so detailed models are already presented in this paper again i am not discussing on this part the most important part is that it should be as small as possible so it should be in nanometer range okay if it is a nanometer just that when oxygen adsorb over there it is full depletion okay so that's what another thing is that you have a nanomaterial or metal oxide which is actually uh, sitting on suppose silicon dioxide right so and it is a simple nanomaterial right the oxygen comes and reacts with the nanomaterial so if we have a access on the sides that would be great so that means your surface area should be high it should be large that means if we have a porous structure so porous structure which is not about the access of the top side it is also my gas are also having access to the all the side right so my so i also should have some sort of porous structure which is which are having access not only the front side it is also are having access to all over the all over the grains all over the thing so the most preferable design for that it is actually nano wire okay so there are detailed review paper which i we have uh, our laboratory has published uh, please go through this review paper where i explain everything but uh, another thing is that this is a fantastic paper which details about there are three type of nanomaterials the nano dot nano wire and planar structures if it is a nano dot or nano wire you see that rho zero is nothing but limit of detection so how low my how what is the lower concentration it can detect so this rho zero is like that so if it is a 1 ppm of gas the response time for nano wire or nano dot is actually less than 1 second where is actually for planar structure it is more than 10 to the power 3 second so you can see if you take a thing so you can see like it is like that right so so it is like that if you take uh, i don't know what is happening okay this this time like right? <clears throat> so the preferable structure is actually nano wire so what we understand we should have a material which is nothing but nano wire okay now our first study start so this study is actually hydrogen and methane detection for for pediatric patient and to see what kind of bacterial infection we have as we as i told you if i am having a bacterial infection for pediatric patient or lactose intolerance they excel out more amount of hydrogen and methane okay that is a simple study we have done and simple sensor we have developed okay 
So, uh, so let us, we have an international patent and more than five publication. One of the important publication we have, uh, we have said. So before I uh, go to the actual development of hydrogen and methane sensor, you see for uh, methane sensor is actually very uh, critical sense because methane is the strongest hydrocarbon. Okay, dissociate methane is really problem. So how the methane sensing are happening? So you have a zinc oxide or metal oxide when and oxygen adsorb over there, it creates a depletion region. Okay. Now you introduce methane. Now when you introduce methane, methane has to dissociate and generate hydrogen. Similarly, you see CH4 and dissociate CH3 and generate hydrogen. Similarly, CH3 also further dissociate and generate hydrogen. This hydrogen reacts with this oxygen and generate electron and it reduces the resistance. Okay. So that is how it is same. And that is why I showed the how the sensing are happening for hydrogen. So what is the bottom line? Bottom line is that methane detection of methane is nothing but hydrogen sensing. Met detection of methane is nothing but hydrogen sensing. But there's two problems. One problem is that look at that I need to dissociate methane CH4 to CH3 plus hydrogen it room temperature is practically impossible to as i told it strong as hydrocarbon so we have to rise the temperature we have to rise the sensor should have the zinc oxide or tin oxide the metal oxide which are sensing methane it has to we have to increase the temperature to 300 or 350 degrees celsius moreover the most important part during this redox reaction it generates water now you see the problem problem is that we have a metal oxide and now each and every reaction it generates water this ultimately you see the whole metal oxide is covered by water. So further reaction of methane to metal oxide is not happening. And that gives the instability, instability for long term operations. This is the one of the reason for the long term operation. So what is the solution for this? Bottom line is that rise the temperature. If you rise the heat it, so there won't be any methane and uh, there won't be any uh, water. Not only that, methane will dissociate. And that is what the uh, that uh, microheater is very, very important. So IST have developed a lot of microheater. Our group, one of the group are working intensively to develop the microheater. This is one of the MEMS space microheater we have developed. Uh, I'm not going, uh, so you can find all the details over there. But the problem is the following. See, you have a metal oxide and you are rise the temperature 300 degrees Celsius, I, I found. But rising the 300 degrees Celsius, always generate thermal shock of your metal oxide at the active sensing material what will happen today you are going to get a result tomorrow you are going to get a result day after tomorrow you are going to get result but after one week or after two weeks you go don't go don't have the same result what you are getting today there will be huge because due to this thermal shock you are generating a lot of grain diffusion cracks and everything that changed the morphology of zinc oxide and the sensing profile changed so 300 degree sensor rising the temperature is not a recommended. If we don't have other option, we have to go. But if we, if we have other options, we have to take it. Okay. So what is the options? So there is actually, this is the, our uh, theory. So here actually optically activated gas sensor we have proposed. We have also filed a patent. We have a three, four publication on it. And what is that? It's called the photocatalytic dissociation of gases. And it is the report from chemical review that they have they are presenting like you have a platinum titanium dioxide and if any hydrocarbons come over there at a particular wavelength of light emitting diode when you shine the light emitting diode a particular wavelength of light the gas will dissociate we actually adopt these things but they have applied for different purpose okay so we have introduced and we have developed optimized one of the material called the platinum dioxide which is known as the Adams Kaffer catalyst. It's known uh, from 1922 before our independence. And it was very, very popular in the chemical industry as a hydrogen uh, uh, dissociator, right? And so we have, as we know that we have to develop some sort of nanoware out of that. And we have fabricated the platinum platinum dioxide nanoware. Why platinum platinum dioxide nanoware? Because platinum platinum dioxide nanoware actually generating uh, some sort of uh, what is called uh, field which may dissociate methane okay and that's what we have done this is the real picture of uh, nanoware and uh, uh, this we have proved that it dissociate methane there are a lot of modeling and uh, theoretical calculation we have done 
So, but it's not the end. What I am going to show you the uh, real magic over that. Uh, so, you see what we have done. We have calibrated our sensor from hydrogen from 1 ppm to 50 ppm. Yes, it is sensing 1 ppm to 50 ppm. It is sense we are very happy. But see, the baseline is not proper. There is a lot of baseline drifts are there. Why baseline drifts are there? Because there are a lot of water accumulations are happening due to the redox reaction. And that each and every action, each and every exposure of gases, it changed the baseline. So, what we have done, we have, we did the thing. So, this is actually what we have shown. There are a lot of baseline drift, which actually create a lot of instability. What we did, we shine, we take a proper uh, suitable uh, wavelength of light. It is simple LED which costs 10, 15 rupees from Amazon. We got it and we shine over there. The moment you shine it, you see the things. This is the LED we have used and you see that there is no baseline drift. We have done it for 30 days and you see there is no baseline drift. So one single LED, it actually avoided all kind of uh, bases. So not only that, if when you extend it to up to 1000 ppm, it is giving some soft sensing. So this hydrogen sensor, whatever you have developed, it can calibrate 1 ppm to 1000 ppm. It's a huge range we can deliver, calibrate and even, uh, okay. So now what's about methane? Now what we did, methane means we have to give more energy to the system for the dissociation of uh, that uh, gases, right? We shine double LED. Instead of one LED, we choose the proper wavelength of light and we shine the double LED. And you see that it detects methane. Now here signal processing comes. Signal processing people have to do the following thing. One single LED, so we have a one sensor, one single LED it detects hydrogen, no methane. And double LED, when you shine another LED, it detects the methane, right? Or if, a, if you have a contribution of hydrogen and methane mixture of gases, right? When you shine the single LED, it detects only, only hydrogen. It cannot detect methane because it doesn't have sufficient activation energy. But when you shine, and you know, when you have shined the single LED, we know the, what is the contribution of hydrogen. Now, when you shine double LED, what will happen? It detects the mixed hydrogen and methane. Now, signal processing, uh, now with the signal process, help of signal processing, since we know the hydrogen contribution and six, and since we know the contribution for hydrogen and methane added together, so we can easily extract out the hydrogen, con uh, hydrogen contribution from the hydrogen methane contribution, mixed contribution, and we can get to know about the methane uh, contribution to the sensor, right? So, one single LED, it can detect hydrogen, and double LED, it is detected methane. And that is the beauty of it. It's not a sensor array, it's a single sensor, but one or two lights are actually operating in the pulse mode, and it gives this part. So, it initiates a lot of research, and we have developed some prototypes, but here is uh, some problem. As I told you, when I have tested my sample, it was working. Now, when we gone, when we have gone to pediatric patients and doctors, when we were discussing, we have realized one problem. For aloe vera, uh, like you, as I told you, uh, that we have to extract particular gas from the lungs, right? For pediatric patient, for a uh, baby, for newborn baby, it's very difficult to blow the chamber. We have realized. Because they are, um, you understand, they cannot blow. They don't have that power to blow. So we face first problem for the thing. Second thing, then we thought like, why not we take a pump? But you cannot put a pump, um, baby is having some mask, and you cannot put a pump to extract out. It can be massacred, right? Because uh, baby should uh, excel out the proper amount of gases, a pump should create particular pressure to the chamber. So pump is also not allowed. Okay, then we come back to the our nascent way, the old way. So you collect the samples and do the measurement. Okay, we are trying to do it, but still there is a lot of failure. What is the failure that we are having? It happens so that when you try to do this experiment, it that my sensor is maybe selected to hydrogen and methane, but there is a chance that it is also interfacing to other gases, other 3000 VOCs are there. It might be 
interfacing on these gases and we are not getting the expected result what we are supposed to get. So still we are discussing, we are modifying our, dis, uh, uh, our chamber and our the module. Um, let's see how it is happening. So we are actually start discussing with a uh, pediatrician in AIMS. Uh, and uh, definitely we are going to get help from DSC. But if uh, just now we had a discussion of CDAC, so if they can come forward, we can have, uh, we can develop our own uh, hardware over there. So uh, my, so this is the problem that we have first, but we have developed sensor, but we have that issues. Okay. Now, uh, 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 now second topic is the cardiovascular disease. I'll go very briefly. Uh, we have a lot of publication and we have a patent for that. These are the biomarkers. There are 10 biomarkers and these are the biomarkers that we have highlighted. Now, what are the biomarkers? So suppose you say carbon monoxide, but look at the range, 200 ppb to 2 ppm. Look at the concentration. It's very difficult to have a sensor with this range. Look at the methane and related hydrocarbons, 2 ppm to 0.5 ppm, like ppb range. Look at the isoprene level, 1 to 2 ppm. Isoprene is actually cholesterol metabolism, methane and relative hydrocarbons, acute, uh, acute heart failure, uh, carbon monoxide and FENO, cardiomyopath, so, and uh, fractional NO is actually pulmonary hypertension. So all actually related. But look at the range. Range are very, very critical. The concentration of range are very critical. There is no aspect sensor available which can detect such a low concentration. So we are having also some problem. So what we have developed, because we know how to work with the optical based gas sensor, right? So we are developing. So it is actually, we have developed met palladium zinc oxide with a, uh, electro, uh, uh, the microwave acid synthesizer. Uh, in brief, recently we have published a paper about that. You see, there is a two sensor we have developed. One is actually methane and another one is actually called the carbon monoxide. But look at that. It is a dual activation. What is dual activation? So earlier, whatever hydrogen and methane are operating only the UV light, means only the LED. There is a no thermal activation. But what we found, if we want to detect at such a low concentration of gases, it is very, we need to make my surface are so sensitive. And it was very difficult for only one uh, LED, okay. We have uh, still we are doing lot of research to uh, to perform only by LED, but still we have not done it. So here uh, we could not uh, success. Uh, we have not reached any success. So still, though we know that temperature are not uh, good for our sensor, but still to reach that so low sensitivity, low concentration rate, we have done it. So at same sensor, same sensor. If you operate at 300 degrees Celsius, it is very selective to methane. The moment you operate to 200 degrees Celsius plus UV light, it is selective to carbon monoxide. Okay. And you can see this is uh, the, all the selectivity test. Okay. Now, as, we, as I told you, we still, uh, we, uh, okay. we are, still we are actually, we still we are working to reduce the temperature down to 150 degrees Celsius. As we already explained that high temperature is not a good enough, but still we are working on it. Okay. But still we have developed and we are trying to, uh, we have developed carbon monoxide and methane sensor and we are trying to optimize it. Uh, uh, to put all together in a package form and try to see the cardiovascular disease parameters. So apart from that, we also need to have a carbon dioxide sensor as a carbon is also kind of biomarker for uh, cardiovascular disease. This is the recent paper of 2021 we have published and uh, uh, so this is all actually selective carbon dioxide sensor that we have developed. And this, uh, so we also put all thing in a single box, carbon monoxide sensor, methane and carbon dioxide. Okay. And uh, sorry, uh, this is actually, uh, yeah. So uh, this carbon dioxide sensor also we have developed, so we put over there, not this thing. And uh, this is the method and this material is nothing but copper oxide. Okay. Copper oxide nanoparticles. Now, there is another uh, biomarker, which I told you, isoprene. Okay, isoprene is a cholesterol metabolism, which we have communicated recently, uh, just few weeks back. Uh, I'm showing only the data. So isoprene is also what we have found. It is also, we have developed a method. We developed the sensor, which is very selective only to isoprene, right? So that means most of the biomarkers, as per the literature we have collected, though it is not standardized, but we have collected, we have put into the sensor and we just want to see how it responds. Okay. So that portion actually we are actually planning to do. How do we are planning to do? Let me discuss. This is all the signal processing. Let's not 
difficulties. As I told you, we have to develop the sensor at less than 500 rupees. So if you want to develop a sensor less than 500 rupees, so it is not possible to develop on silicon. Silicon substrate is costly because one four inch substrate is cost around 150 or 200 dollars, right? So we have taken the flexible substrate which cost Air Force size one or two rupees. Okay, and this is the micro heater we have designed. Okay, so as it's a dual activation platform, so this is the heater uh, we have designed, and it's a four cross four gas sensor array. You can see uh, that 16 sensor bits are there into 5 mm by 5 mm uh, um, uh, uh, that uh, area. And this is the process test. You can see after fabrication, it looks like that it's a fabricated gas sensor on acetate sheet, which costs one or two rupees of A4 and it is we have taken only 5 mm by 5 mm okay and this is nothing but platinum nano uh, platinum rod are in between that this is the thermal image of the sensors and uh, uh, we have dispensed now whatever the materials we have optimized for example isoferrin we have optimized for tungsten oxide then uh, carbon dioxide we have optimized for copper oxide zinc oxide we have optimized for ca carbon monoxide methane all the selective sensors we have actually put on the each and every uh, each and every uh, pixel okay and we actually dice it bond it okay now how uh, now we actually did our respiratory system and like our cardiovascular we just want to see and we also try to map it with the uh, like we collect our samples and we try to map with whatever gcms says uh, we are also i mean to say like we also collect our samples and test with the gcms system Similarly, we also blow the sense, uh, our breath on the, uh, like, uh, our sensor, whatever we have developed. And these are the profile we got. So, you look at that, that co copper oxide uh, is very selective to carbon dioxide, but it still has some sensitivity to NO, isoprene, carbon monoxide. Similarly, palladium zinc oxide is very selective to NO, but it is not uh, NO and carbon monoxide, but it's not great selective to carbon dioxide. Now, for vanadium pentoxide, it is very sensitive to NO only. Now look at the palladium zinc oxide is selective to carbon monoxide NO, and vanadium pentoxide is selective to NO only. And, heat, and tungsten oxide, it is selective to isoprene. Now you see, I am giving you pattern. Now signal processing paper, and now it needs to be solved by signal processing, right? And to tell you, we need to tell and by signal processing you can tell what are the concentration of the gases actually actually exhaling out so we can do this part so definitely we are working on it and we are looking for the collaboration on the signal processing and machine learning over here so hopefully we can do it so this is the thing that we have developed so this is that one of the package sensor what we have developed for urc it is a hmc package you can see this is the led over there and this is the sensor so four sensor over there this is one of the sensor that is the four. Uh, so this is the carbon monoxide and hydrogen sensor we have developed. This is the four gas sensor for cardiovascular disease. You can see that this is actually four gas as the car carbon monoxide, isoprene, methane, and hydrogen are there. So and it's, it's actually general platform. You can put any gases over there. I mean you can make it any gas sensor, right? We have a equipment called picoliter dispensing unit, and we know what kind of gas. What are the functionalized agent we need to put on the each and every element, each and every uh, pixel of the gases, and we can make it. So these are the sensor that we have developed. This is the six uh, gas sensor array that we have developed, and uh, we are actually, uh, though it is developed for human space program for carbon monoxide sensor, it needs to go for the, all the qualification space. So difficulties of real breath samples. So when we try to do the cardiovascular disease, the sensors are not stable. Sensors are stable in lab, a lab environment. But when uh, we are trying to do it out of the lab, we have found a lot of uh, problems because blow to blow, it is totally different. So one, when one person blow, and uh, so the sensing it is totally different when uh, if, uh, if other person blow into that, uh, into that uh, model. And we have found some, some of the leakage. So leak, some leak is happening, which needs to modify it. Uh, we are actually still finding where is the leak. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, during each blow, the current is increasing suddenly, and the equilibrium reach after some time. So actually, we need to e make an equilibrium before we con before we uh, uh, before we uh, comments about the concentration. But it's very difficult to uh, when we go for the real atmosphere, real sample. So uh, the equilibrium is not establishing uh, so quickly. 
uh, so we are also looking for how to how to make a packaging and how to make a proper instrumentation package part to do this such uh, uh, there is recalibrating the sensor we have noticed slight deviation that also we don't know why there's slight deviation but each and every portion we need to highlight and we are still working on this part so optically activated gas sensor has significant potential as reliable gas sensor we have worked on it and we are actually kind of uh, established the sensor part now we need to standardize the method number one and number two we need to have a proper signal cost in hardware unit okay that we are actually we need to have a proper discussion with the proper team uh, attempt are made to reduce the illumination uh, defect in uh, microseconds or milliseconds so uh, if you have a constant illumination so there is uh, also some defects are introducing which we need to avoid uh, Okay, and it is a low power device. Definitely, the whole cost is less than five thousand rupees. So we have to stick on uh, this part, and we try try to improve our technology, which we are actually planning to do. And selectivity can be controlled by different wavelength of light. That is one of the things that I told you. When you one shine of the light, it selects hydrogen. Different select of light, uh, or double light, or three LED, it detects uh, methane and ammonia. So. Uh, this method actually we are actually want to explore further to make a reliable another thing that I forgot to tell you that this optical activation when you test it for 30 days there is a no deviations and even there is a deviation less than one or two percent so it is a good uh, it is a potential to integrate gas sensor along with the LEDs definitely we are we have already established uh, we have into the LED a compact package uh, only we have to have a proper calibration okay and proper uh, 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 validation of the sensors, right? But we are doing by our own breath, but we really need, and we saw a lot of problems. We really, and what we want, we near, really need to see from the patient side, what they are saying, what what are the problems they are facing, right? So, um, because we are kind of healthy, but we patients are not, may not be healthy. So what kind of problem they are facing while, uh, while performing the excel based therapy? That also we need to find out. So uh, thank you, and I must acknowledge uh, Director Registered IST for such a great uh, uh, facility of funding so much things. I must uh, thank DST huge investment, DST, DBT, uh, HSFC, Human Space Flight Center, IPSC, IST provide funding to establish the laboratory phase one. Phase one is going to complete at the end of this uh, year, and phase two will be initiating, which is nothing but cardiovascular uh, excel breath analysis lab. And I must thank all my PhD, PG, and UG. Without them, uh, yeah, it's, it's very difficult to go ahead. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for this wonderful session. And it was great listening to you. As a token of love and appreciation, we are providing you with a moment, sir. Kindly accept it. Yeah, yes, sir. But uh, how, sir? How, to, uh, how to make it full screen? I just. Can I ask some questions? Yes, sir. Uh, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely, sir. So uh, I just yeah. want to make a full screen. How to do, sir? Uh, okay. uh, full screen. Stop. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Uh, 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 thank you, Dr. Basu, for your, your very informative talk on the particularly on disease diagnosis from uh, respiration, uh, expiring gases. And you, with regard to your work on lung cancer, uh, I would like to know which cancer you have selected, which type, whether it was adenocarcinoma or squamous cell carcinoma or non-small cell carcinoma or, or small, small cell, cell carcinoma. Huh? Small cell carcinoma. Small cell carcinoma alone. Yeah, at the moment, uh, we, are, we are actually studying some papers. Oh, and yeah. What we are doing, we are trying to find out exact biomarkers, right? Okay. So as I told you, there are two types of papers, or there are such a ten papers are there, and they are actually telling different different uh, type of uh, uh, biomarkers. So we are trying to see what are the biomarkers are common. So suppose three papers and three paper different different biomarkers are there. We are trying to see what are the biomarkers are common, and then we'll see if we can make a device only those biomarkers as a first stage okay? okay so frankly speaking sir we are not targeting too much on the specific uh, 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 specific cancer rather than we are actually doing some such of like uh, finding some finding some sort of biomarker which can be used 
or fabricate a proper sensor in our laboratory. So that much details we have not gone through. Okay, okay. Because because most of the uh, lung cancers are adenocarcinomas, and oh. and the, um, our interest, my interest is to see whether early cancers can be detected by using this technique. Because diagnosing advanced lung cancer is meaningless. If you can detect, if you can characterize some gases or uh, as, uh, just like what you have shown, the proportion, the ratio of carbon dioxide, methane, etc., etc., uh, a, for a particular tumor, particularly adenocarcinoma, it will be much, much beneficial. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Actually, sir, I, uh, I really appreciate your concern about these things. Actually, uh, since we don't have a good breath library, so we thought like, when we try to standardize the process, we'll take the advanced patients to see, because advanced patients, we believe that it, they will excel more like a, more biomarkers. The concentration yeah, yeah, will be higher. Yeah, yeah. So we can at least target that, no. okay, these six type of BOCs are excelling out more. So now, then we extend out for the early stage. So that is what our idea. So we prefer to have a advanced stage cancer to identify a proper biomarkers. So it would, there would be one uh, good, uh, 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 there would be one good thing is that if it is advanced stage biosensor, uh, so advanced stage cancer, the concentration of gases would be also higher. Yeah, yeah. The detection yeah. would be also be easy for us. And whatever the problems that we are suffering, because we have to get knowledge, we have to gather knowledge because uh, yeah. so that knowledge maybe help us because yeah. we are still in very nascent stage. So that was our idea. So we prefer to have advanced stage cancer rather than early stage because early stage, how to uh, how to take early stage, even that is also be questionable because as per the CDC, there is a 10, 10 pack cigarette, 20 pack cigarette, all these things are there. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So if if somebody saying that okay, you might have a cancer. So whether I'll go to doctors or no, no, I said I am not going to take. Well, why I'm going to have a cancer? Because that is my mental biasness is there. So it is better to have a adverse stage cancer. So definitely in future level, extended level, I'll prefer to have a uh, maybe first stage cancer patient. But at the moment, in beginning level, so I'll 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 be happy to have a. First stage, uh, uh, last stage, or advanced stage cancer. Okay. To establish our process. Sure. I think uh, how you, good that if you, can, if you can concentrate on COPD patients, so probably you will get more uh, early lesions. Yes, sir. So a COPD patient, like we have tested FENO and FECO, fractional oh. XL NO and fractional XL CO. We have uh, we have concentrated on. Good, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. For okay. Sir. Thank you. Uh, I had a quick question, Dr. Patel. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, you mentioned about the breath library. So, uh, what is the process of creating one breath library? Is yes, sir. Uh, so, the so thing is that the process is that we should have a gold standard. Maybe uh, Sujatan, sir, actually can tell you more. So, what is the standard process is that uh, thing is that we need to have a patient, right? Uh, some patient, lung cancer, suppose it's a lung cancer patient. So we need to have a standard, what are the standard process to detect the cancer? All, all this data we should have, right? All the biopsy report, everything we should have, like all the standard, gold standards are there to detect the cancer. We should have that one. Similarly, we should have breath samples also. And breath sample also needs to be collect, uh, analyzed by the most standard machine, GCMS system. That is the most uh, quantifying machine. So that means sample one, that is not sample, sorry to say, I should not say sample one. Patient one is having this condition, which doctors and pathology people say that this patient one is having this stage, and this is the condition that corresponding to this breath. Okay. Okay. Patient two, this conditions that corresponding to this breath. 
Now you see the problem set, the, uh, that signal processing, because each patient is also having some background disease. So it's very complicated data. So data analysis is very, very, very important over here, sir. So this is the way it is not a one year, two year, or three year work, sir. If you target what SAD said, even if you target small uh, cell lung cancer, whatever, whatever advanced cancer, whatever cancer, we should uh, we should target one level of cancer and we need to do all this investment, investigation at least for one year, two year to standardize the parameters, it's very, very important. Before we develop sensor, before we develop all the signal processing unit, I think this standardized process is very, very important. Otherwise, what will happen? We develop a sensor, suppose carbon monoxide sensor, and ultimately after five years, I found, we may found carbon monoxide is not that great. Maybe another gas has much, much better than detecting carbon monoxide. So standardization is very, very important and most crucial to stay forward. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Panash. Yes, sir. Any further questions from the audience? Yeah. Uh, I'm Krishnamurti here. See, one yes, uh, which I can uh, look into and also what are the interactions which I have with uh, uh, Dr. Palas. First of all, I should congratulate him and his team uh, dedicatedly. In fact, the work what he has shown, maybe focusly was going in the last uh, two to three years, especially during pandemic time, most of the work has happened. Uh, because the passion in which they have and their instrumentation which is in place but one of the because as dr sujatan also has uh, mentioned but this is a promising area this is going to be the future <clears throat> but how do we do these biomarkers is uh, actually should be hand in glove with the medical fraternity one what from the technology what will happen is they will try to characterize they'll try to look at the composition they'll look at the concentration these are the three things which are for any, not only for cancers, any disease which happens uh, inside the body. Uh, first is, unless it is uh, come as a diagnosis or certain stages, we are able to detect because from there you have to go down in the, the lower concentration and the composition, how it will happen. But he also gave one marker that uh, geographically located and the physical activity of the person and also maybe genetically, these also have uh, certain variations can come in the composition and the concentration. That's also important. So here, even today, Dr. Sujatan sir, even the normal method of diagnosis and prognosis, even in the cancers, what is happening, we're not storing these data, data sets and we're not analyzing these data patterns for our, any of the patients, at least I, as far as my knowledge goes. Right, sir, right. Because right. I have a lot of interaction with the people. In fact, the first step is, what is the how did we diagnose? A cancer and what is the treatment we are given and what is the prognosis or the response for it and what is its actual from which place it comes from or which environmental conditions is there in fact parallel this activity should start in the country this is where we will together we will lead uh, for the and give uh, this thing for the world but sensing from the technology front we are in a good shape let me tell you that we have in a good this thing but also maybe palash you should correct me Certain times constraints also helps us to look into different things because that hydrogen related things in uh, the temperature, one is looking into the water and other related and non active. But there are places where they store certain expl explosive type of material. We cannot go near to that and put the instrumentation today commercially. That is what is available in the market. So he is forced to trust with something else to warm up the temperature increase. That's right. where he has come with the LED. Am I right? Yes, sir, so exactly, sometimes sir. in the research, the constraints which we come uh, come forward will actually give us another step. So while doing this work, you will come out with many steps. This is where we need to discuss. This is a good forum where in IEEE forum you have uh, allowed it to be exposed to many uh, faculty and also re uh, research students and research scholars, maybe some part of the other globe also are participating. But this is where we have to come together. In fact, uh, Dr. Palash has given greater details where actually the constraints are coming. This is where we have to think about. But the database creation in terms of what you are looking at, Dr. Manoj, the breath analyzer, is it will evolve. But suddenly the moment it comes to a certain point, it will grow very fast. But then background work, there's a lot of data which is available. The background work, we have to start working on it. And this is the future, why I'm thinking that this is the future each one of us with the lifestyles what we are having are going to have one or other disease so it's like every day 
take a breath and laser, take a breath out and then check. And there is certain medication which is there, very early detection. We take it and we continue our life. Have the good quality of life. This is going to be the future. I have no doubts in it. Okay. So, but then we all had to work together and work a bit faster. And so we'll be in the prime uh, location and we can guide not only for the country, but also for the world. Thank you once again for uh, thank you, sir. The thank you, such sir. a talk. Thank you. And thank, thank you, Dr. Palash, to give us insight. Thank you, you. Thank you Dr. Kishore, for your excellent uh, points. Yeah, you know, I too believe that uh, this is a very, very promising area. But my worry is that, you know, our uh, ecosystem for industry is not in, developed enough to translate the research findings into industry or into you know, market uh, uh, exploitation. So that part is something, it's a collective problem that academic and uh, uh, R&D organizations as well as uh, you know, the uh, medical fraternity should work together to evolve. So right you now, one side we develop a lot of sensors, uh, the other side there's a great demand for uh, Indianized products and services. But you know this supply and demand gap is still uh, there. Uh, there is no way that we are able to bridge it. You know, in fact, it's a very good point that you, you have made. Yes, yes. I think we IEEE is also planning to have many such events, bringing together the you know um, medical fraternity and engineers to actually you know, uh, bridge the gap. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, I have a one uh, thing. So, uh, in continuation to uh, Krishna Muthi sir. So uh, forget about the sensor development, nothing, because we'll go for the standard technique, what is GCMS system. So, but there are a lot of variables like geographical variation, whether I'm athletic or not, whether I'm having background patients or not. There should be stored data. You should store the, all the patient's data, right? Suppose I'm just telling you there's one institute and uh, cancer institute, other multiple people are coming for treating, right? Those data. So if you have if you have such kind of system, they are they are actually detecting the standard process. Similarly, they are detecting the Excel breath or other means, right? These things actually help us, right? So not only for forget about our the Excel breath. What is the geographical uh, variations like? Whether they are suffering more or they're whether they are prone to cancer or not, whether they are having cancer or not. If I am athletic, whether I am having a cancer or not, these data points are missing. Like what people are doing. They take 100 athletics or 100 person who are doing regular exercise and they survey and they say, okay, they don't have uh, the having cancer are very less, but we should have a prolonged activity. So you should have, we should have a data storage. We'll store the data for next maybe five years where each and every zone of the country, like there are a lot of cancer institute in India, right? So we have to store the data based on the physical condition, background genetic geographical and somebody has to analyze and then only we can get right uh, direction cancer the way it is spreading it's not healthy and if we can not stop it like now itself this problem it is problem I, mean, I, I don't know i just want to add this point we also should think about the other variation not like we are having cancer and we go and get treated right we should also think of what are the environment effects on it? What is my work behavior effect on it? We are working here in the chat, the best, best job we are do, be doing. So whether it is having or not, it's not a hundred patients. It may be thousand or billion patients we have to work and then we have to get a proper statistics. That is actually missing. Even if it's small zone, if you can think, even only small Kerala, if you can think and if we can collect, those data and the signal processing guy or data analyst people can do such a nice things I mean, the right job we can get some hints I mean, like this is very very important because i saw when i travel to I mean, when i visit to rcc I mean, it's not uh, not a good uh, environment actually it is, it's very pathetic but like really i'm so emotional when i go um, see the patients Yeah, I think uh, very valuable points, Dr. Palash. Thank you. So, uh, Anna and sir, are we there? So you can just, uh, there are further questions we can ask now or we can go with the vote of thanks. Sir, let's go with a vote of thanks. But before that, participants kindly know that the feedback form is provided in the chat box. Kindly fill it. So uh, now I invite Baiju. NP Secretary EMBS Kerala Chapter to propose the vote of thanks. Uh, thank you, Rana. 
Uh, good evening to all. Uh, on this wonderful evening, I would like to present the vote of thanks. I take this opportunity to thank Dr. Palash Kumar Basu, Associate Professor, Department of Avionics, IAST Trivandrum, for his wonderful talk on the development of gas sensor array for uh, X8 breath and laser. I extend sincere vote of thanks for and on behalf of EMBS Kerala chapter and on my own behalf. Thank you, sir for accepting our invitation and delivering the inspiring speech. On behalf of ITMD EMBS Kerala chapter, I extend my sincere vote of thanks to Dr. B.S. Manoj, the chair of ITMD EMBS Kerala chapter, for the valuable support towards conducting this activity. Thank you, sir. On behalf of ITMD EMBS Kerala chapter, I extend my sincere vote of thanks to all EMBS office bearers and executive members for the effort towards conducting this lecture. Thank you. On behalf of IEEE's EMBS Kerala chapter, I extend my sincere vote of thanks to the student volunteers for their uh, commitment and aggressive support. Also, I extend my vote of thanks to the one and all uh, attending this function who made the event a grand success. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all Thanks again for coming. So we'll come back again with another interesting topic in engineering and the medicine together. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I, I, I have not noticed you, ma'am. You are so watching uh, this small lecture. So thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Because it's, uh, yeah. one of sir, actually, ma'am is there. Have I just noticed. noticed. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's fine. It's a wonderful <laughs> lecture. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. It's a wonderful lecture. You have enlightened us with the latest trends. Thank you. So, Baiju sir, as you all your team can please visit our laboratory. Yeah. We can work together. Please come. And visit okay, sure, sir. We will host you. Okay, okay, sure, sir. We will talk in chat. Sujatan sir is there, so please, sir, please come, sir. Yes, I am here. Yes, sir. So, please, sir, it's, it's nice talking to you, sir. Please. Um, Definitely, so we will have a, I know you are a very busy person, but if you have a time, please visit ISP, sir. Or we can we can go and visit uh, whenever okay. I go ask this. Oh, yes. Let me go and meet and meet you, sir. Yeah, we will discuss. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay, then. Thank you all for coming and yes. participating in this. Right. Thank you. Thanks. So I can leave, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Yeah, please. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Yeah. The meeting is officially closed.